I feel like we've heard these numbers so many times before that we become numb to them. Black patients die three times more often in childbirth and postpartum than white patients. Black patients have severe maternal morbidity complications more often than white patients. I feel like those numbers roll off the tongue so easily that they don't actually mean anything to us anymore. Those are shocking numbers. 700 women die during pregnancy and childbirth yearly. That can't happen. Disparities are inequitable or unequal results in outcomes between different groups of people. Here at Boston Medical Center, we know that our Black birthing patients are significantly more likely to experience serious complications related to pregnancy. And we know that the reason behind most of that difference is in the treatment and management of preeclampsia or other hypertension, high blood pressure disorders. Preeclampsia is a complication of pregnancy that can occur prenatally, so while you're pregnant after 20 weeks gestation, or postpartum after you deliver your baby. It's a complication that causes your blood pressure to spike very high to dangerous levels. Preeclampsia is one of the biggest drivers of healthcare disparities or differences in health outcomes. 18% of our Black pregnant patients experience preeclampsia, while only 14% of white patients do. And so because patients who experience any type of hypertension, but especially preeclampsia, are more likely to have morbidities or complications, it seemed like a really appropriate area to focus on. I think it's an area that we recognized is extremely impactful in the way that we can manage it. We have so many new technologies and so many ways that we can do outreach to patients that doesn't include bringing them into a hospital with a new baby. We have a texting program where we deliver information to our patients across 40 weeks of pregnancy. So the program starts at week eight of pregnancy, goes through six weeks postpartum. That program delivers information about preeclampsia, barriers to care, and aspirin adherence. We also have a pregnancy educational video focused on preeclampsia that is delivered in five languages, English, Spanish, Haitian Creole, Portuguese Creole, and Vietnamese. Our interventions were designed to empower patients to make timely decisions about their care and express agency over their bodies, such as the remote blood pressure monitoring program. When we were first thinking about this program, we knew that we needed to find a way to have that technology be instantaneous and not on the patient. Any patient that comes to our clinic to receive care and they meet one of our high-risk criteria for developing preeclampsia prenatally or postpartum, they receive a blood pressure cuff at that visit. The patient then goes home with the machine and they receive a teaching visit with me within three business days. We partnered with a company who was able to find us a device that uses cell technology. And so the device picks up the data through cell towers, not through a patient's cell phone, not by them texting it to us, and immediately transmits it to their medical record for us to review. We have already improved several of our metrics when it comes to the differences in health outcomes between Black and non-Black birthing patients. One of the most significant is our decrease in the number of patients who need to come back and be admitted to the hospital after delivering because of blood pressure complications. This helps to increase bonding because they're not being removed from their homes. It provides better care for our patients because they don't have those complications. And it also helps the hospital system because we have more space for our delivering patients. The health conditions that we are targeting now, while a significant portion of healthcare disparities, are still only a part of the picture. So as we continue this work, expanding it to reach more of our patients, as well as providing a model that other healthcare systems can use to reach their patients is a huge step that we'll be able to take in order to improve healthcare for all people. The mom and the role of the family in our communities is such an incredibly powerful piece of the way that our world functions. And if we can do something that treats mothers better, families better, I think that we just all win in that scenario.